time difference. Um, and it's it's just such a beautiful play. It's such an uplifting uh, piece, actually. And and I'll I'll say for my own part, it's it, it's just touching to have after the week we've had in in Washington. So, uh, thank you again for sharing the, this this beautiful piece with us and and for chatting uh, with 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 me today. Um, hi, how are you both? Good. Uh, thanks everybody for listening and tuning in. So thank you. Yeah, it's great to see. Um, I know we can't see your faces at the moment, but you know, feel free to turn your cameras on. Um, it's great to see so many people uh, here and yeah. tuned in. So thanks a million. Um, yeah, hello everyone in America. It's funny. Yeah, uh, I was going to say is a bit of a slow news week for you guys this week. You know. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I'm going to ask just a few questions. Um, uh, of, of you guys, and then um, audience members, if you have questions, just drop them into the chat. And my assistant producer, Makala, uh, she'll be collecting those and sending them to us. So uh, Stephen and Shauna, don't feel like you have to monitor the chat there. Um, we'll, we'll get those fed to us. Um, but uh, I, maybe an, an easy question to start off with, uh, I, and, and a fun one, of how do you really feel about karaoke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll let you take that one, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm, I'm a big fan of karaoke. Um, to the point where boy, like, this is very embarrassing, but I'm willing to share it. Even a few years ago on holiday, I I was unhappy with a karaoke song I had done. So I kind of made my way back to that bar the following night to make sure I could do it myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you just had to go back and save face. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, I... It, it, it's such a divisive thing, I find. Like, people are either like, I love it or I hate it. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that if you're, if you're kind of a really rubbish, really terrible singer, and you just want to do it for fun, or you're a kind of a middling singer, and you can sort of hold a note, then it's great, you know. But if you're a brilliant singer, then, you know, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's, it's, it's not for, like, champion singers. Yeah. It's, it's for, like, okay singers. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Um, uh, here's a question from, from Michael. Uh, what's your go-to karaoke sh song for, for both of you? I was always really embarrassed to do karaoke, but um, so my probably, my, so I've only done it a handful of times. Um, I've done some really bad Amy Winehouse, which now I realize is a, it's a great, great songs, but bad choice for me. I should just probably go for something like, a bit more fun. I've done some Spice Girls, that kind of thing as well. There, yeah. yeah. But I need to review my choice and come back with a, a better answer. I used to go for, um, it's kind of a strange mix. I either go for Your Song by Elton John or Folds and Prison Brews by... by <laughs> Amazing, yeah. Uh, mine would be like, I, I don't love karaoke, um, but when I, whenever I do it, I do something like Bob Dylan and I do my best Bob Dylan impression the whole time. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, um, it's so interesting what the, the sort of the lifespan of this play, Stephen um, and, and Shauna both, but, you know, it started as a, a stage performance. It's obviously a radio drama. Um, and didn't I read that it's, it's being made into a film, right? Uh, well, a TV series. Oh, uh, a TV series. Yeah. So oh, wow. It was it was um, again a, a production company and who were teaming up with RTE. Um, I'd seen my previous play and I'd seen this play and they thought that it would. They'd worked with me and Shauna as actors on different projects and um, they kind of were interested to see how it might uh, spread out, how the world might open up from that flat and mm. you know the stories of the other characters and. Um, so we kind of worked on a little treatment for that and uh, they kind of went ahead with it. So it's still in the very early stages. It, it's still um, only the, the, the large, we call it a Bible, the, the treatment. Um, yeah. It's like a page document. Everything that happens has been written and the first episode has been written of six. So the plan is hopefully if um, all the funding works out that we can go and film it in the autumn. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, so what what is the... Um... What's the goal for this sort of the expanded story of it? Well, it still deals with this kind of weekend uh, um, that they spend together. But mm -hmm. um, you sort of, you, you can see just different flashbacks to different times where you start to see the relationship 
uh, of Anya and Sean and Lloyd and Denise uh, at different times. So, and the, the flashbacks might get sparked from, you know, um, I might say something that triggers an emotion or a memory in in Shauna's character, and that leads us to um, some sometime in the past that something happened between her and Sean to build a story. Then you've got some of their friends and Anya's family. So it's still the structure of the weekend, but it's jumping from that weekend to different points in their in their past. It might be five years ago at a karaoke competition when Lloyd and Denise first meet, or it might be yeah. their their last encounter before she she leaves for a trip. Um, and you get to, you might get to see scenarios that may or may not have happened with uh, Sean and Lloyd, and and yeah. the future. did they meet? What did they actually say? you know, what's real, what's imagined, what's, you know, so, yeah, so it still keeps some of the same structure, but um, gets it out of the flat as well, as, you know. Right, sometimes. right. Oh, great. That's really exciting. I'm looking forward to, I mean, obviously that'll be later down the road, but that's, it's something to look forward to. And, and you'll both be performing in that, right? Yes. <laughs> as far as we know. Yeah, <laughs> well, great. Yeah, it would, it would be so hard to imagine this without you two. And, you know, um, uh, for those of you who uh, remember uh, last year, 2019, we had Stevens play from Eden, also in our play reading series, which was another collaboration with Shauna. And it seems like you two have a, a, a good uh, acting and writing um, partnership going on. And I just a question for uh, two questions, one for each of you, um, Steven, I'm curious, you know, what's the writing process like when you know the actor who's going to be in the piece so well. Um, and then Shauna, for you, um, I'm curious about what is your role in the development of the process? Just, you know, both of these, both of those plays um, that I know pretty well now, the dialogue has such great rhythm to it. It has such a natural flow and it seems, it feels like that's a, a strong collaboration, perhaps in the writing process as well. I'm, I, I'm not sure, I, I, but so, that's my question for, for both of you on, on, on that part. Yeah, well, myself and Sean know each other probably about 10 years now nearly. And we were, we met, even though we're from, we're from the same part of Dublin, which actually helps when you're talking about rhythm and understanding the, the way mm -hmm. I write and the colloquialisms and stuff like that. Um, I mean, our, we grew up five minutes down the road from each other, but oh, we wow. don't each other because I'm a few years older than Shauna and we went to different schools. But we met as actors in a kind of workshop scenario with a lot of top Irish directors. And it was, they were trying to make like an actor studio in the model of the old New York thing, just come and bring yeah. scenes. And I was writing a couple of scenes and I was always trying to get Shauna to read my scenes because I just felt that she had an intrinsic awareness, like knowledge of our um, empathy towards or a natural feeling towards the stuff that I was writing and the way I was writing it. So, um, Maybe it's to do with where we're from, and um, maybe it's just you know uh, a natural connection that we made. But uh, yeah, I, I can write something when I'm writing these characters, like in From Eden, and this character, I am specifically writing for Shauna and writing for her her voice and what I I think her interpretation will be, how she'll naturally the rhythms of the character sort of get mixed in with Shauna's natural rhythm. So it mm. helps me a lot because then she can take it and run with it and make her own changes and you know, it all works out pretty well. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, I think I, Stephen's work actually comes fully formed. So mm. I get an actual script and you're like, right, okay, he's written everything. Um, and then it's just a matter of like that, I kind of understand how Stephen, um, his like syntax and the rhythm of things and how it's very back and forth and we cross over and it's very like cue, cue heavy. Mm. But at the same time, what's good about it is that I'm allowed to call anything that I don't believe or can I change this? Can we, that has to be like, I can direct him just as much as he comes back to me with things, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, and I always claim there's a lot in there that I put into it. I'm like, that line's mine, that line's mine, that line's mine. I just don't get a credit for it. So oh, it's, yeah. he's putting that in there now. No, buddy, he, it, is, <laughs> it is a fully formed script when it comes. I just enhance it with my editing. 
Yeah, no, we'll just... yeah, I, I'm an actor myself and I've done plenty of like world premieres and I know what original cast put into to works or where sometimes, sometimes it's the, it's the case of like, I wrote that entire joke yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and now it's printed. Uh, in Jonah's case, you might have wrote, written the joke five years ago at a kitchen table somewhere or over, uh, over, over a pint and I've stolen it then, you see. But like any, lots of writers in the in the chat now, it's like it's like anything. It has to be collaborative, especially when it's, yeah. it's new work. And just to say, we'll probably talk about him in a bit, but you, you might have heard his voice just on the radio drama because we had to, it is slightly different from the stage play that we had to make the last scene like a letter just to kind of... Mm really we were we were short for time the radio drama is a lot shorter so we had the voice of carl shields who directed both of the plays oh, yeah. carl sadly is no longer with us he right. passed away um but uh he contributed between the three of us you know he, we really he really um helped tighten the script and and bring yeah. out a lot of a lot his, of the his other. notes were amazing his notes on like how we work as humans and our the psyche of you know the different characters and because he was an actor as well he was able to like give really nice useful notes that kind of yeah. just stand somewhere in the back of your head and kind of work the way forward but um it was actually lovely to hear as well his voice in that yeah and, uh, and the sure wee, special yeah yeah the wee bit of irish as well just so or did you say yeah long yeah there mm, nice um you know, something I really connect with, Stephen, with, with your plays, knowing both from Eden and, and Northern Lights, is, is just that, that natural charm that you're talking about. That, and, and like this chemistry that, that you two as performers have, it comes through in the writing so well as well. And, and, and like these are really likable characters. Um, and there's just this vulnerability that they have that lies, you know, just underneath their exterior. And... You know, I, I think maybe particularly in the United States, um, sometimes I, I feel like Irish drama is, is stereotyped into, you know, dark humor with a lot of violence and some savory characters who you don't want to go to dinner with. And, um, but these are people that I like, I, I would love to go to karaoke with these characters. And, and um, you know, your work inspires me to think about, you know, what are we not asking? What, you know, what are the things that, that in our circle of influence that, you know, what can we ask that to get to know the people around us? There's a quality of drawing something out of someone else in, in your characters that, that is, I think, very sensitively done. And I'm just curious, is that something you're intentionally exploring in your writing? Is that just sort of who you are as a person? <laughs> um, like, where does that sort of voice perspective come from? It's probably a mixture of all those things. I think it's probably, it's probably looking at a generation before me of Irish men and like including my father and my uncles and also in the arts Irish playwrights and people I would have performed heroes of mine like Tom Murphy and, and Friel and mm. um, where you had a more stereotypical strong silent Irish man whereas my generation right. were a little more open we, as the world is in terms of talking about emotions and your mental health but we're still there's still trappings of you know, not being vulnerable or mm. so uh, we're kind of, we're okay to post on social media about how important our mental health is. And yet we'll still hold something back. So uh, I, I almost feel my generation of, of, of Irish men are, are sometimes caught between those two worlds. So you find yeah. a character Lloyd who is desperately seeking an outlet for his, the grief that he's going through. And when he finally releases it, he discovers how, how, how simple it was and how cathartic it was all along, but it, it, it takes a, it takes a, a long road for someone like him to get there. Um, yeah. So I think that's probably in the ether. I mean, I, I did great workshops with an Argentinian playwright last year. Now I can say, and uh, called Javier Dolte and he, he's just a brilliant mind. Uh, and a small little note that he gave me. And I mean, I have, I've got a master's degree in creative writing and I've written plays and you, this is stuff that you think, you know, but you don't, he said, um, your play, the play is is far more, knows much more, is far more intelligent than the writer. Mm, <laughs> so mm -hmm. all of these things in there, a lot of them will be unconscious and it takes Shauna or an audience or Carl, our director, to point them out to me as the yeah. writer. They're just in the ether of my headspace and in the world and I, I kind of, they, they find their way onto a page and then onto yeah. a stage. That's it, you know? Shauna, what's that like with, you know, because 
obviously in a two hander, you're you're such a uh, you know fifty percent of the cast, a huge voice, and in, 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 and particularly again, like we said in the new work, um, what's that like for you to like identify like w- w- for Steven sometimes of like oh I think this should be reinforced or or let's let, let's like go down that rabbit hole or. The wonderful thing is, is that Stephen's actually very open to that. And once he hands mm. over the script, he has this ability to like really let let go and like let the script be yours then and the character be yours. <laughs> That's maybe why I go, I made this up because like <laughs> he, let, he, he lets you do that. And he lets, he let Car- Carl do that as well. He be- really beca- becomes an actor in the room then. Mm. And then like he'd even say sometimes oh oh, yeah like what was what was I of course that's what yeah what was I thinking or we'll change it um so um yeah he's very open in the room to having those changes and stuff yeah that's great I mean I those are the types of artists we all want to work with right and and, yeah uh, that is collaborative uh, yeah Um, I mean especially in theater right I mean like it's the most collaborative of art forms you kind of have to be check myself to go okay because we know each other and we can cut through a lot of the pleasantries that we both have to check ourselves sometimes and go okay like let's talk to each other like how we talked to an actor we didn't know that well that maybe <laughs> we might have to like you know smooth out the edges rather than be uh-huh. like sharp you know yeah, yeah fair enough like, too direct you know Right. I have a term when I'm working on new plays, when I'm, when I'm directing, um, and particularly with co-writing models, um, where we talk about whose yard is where and when the gate is open and when it's shut. <laughs> I'm yes. like, when you're allowed to walk in someone's yard and when it's like, get out, I need to do yeah. my work. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the gate will open again, but just give me a minute to like, exactly in your garden, I'll be over here. Yeah. 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 Um, speaking of other yards, though, <laughs> Shauna, how's that for a transition? Uh, I mean, Shauna, you're obviously such a theater talent, but you've got so many exciting irons in the fire with like TV and film. Um, I want to point uh, our audiences to your your film on Netflix, uh, Hole in the Ground, which premiered at the Sundance Festival, and and you're currently filming something uh, on for Amazon series with Kit Harrington. Uh, yeah. called Modern Love, and congrats on that. It sounds really fun. Um, and there's a few questions in, in the chat about, um, and this could be for either of you, but I'll start with Shauna. Um, do you prefer working in one medium or the other, uh, film, TV, even radio, of course? But Yeah, even listening back there, I was saying to Stephen, there's, there's parts of the radio play that I'm like, oh, I just... I wish I could go back in there and re-record it, you know, to make it translate that bit better. Mm. And because I think it is, it's, it's a lovely medium that like, you know, podcasts and stuff are into listening again. But um, like, I do love being in a rehearsal room. Like that's just like the best act. Like that is where so much fun can happen and uh, just being with people and that's great but um that's a tough one because I started out in film and then mm. I went to theatre and then I've been really lucky that I've had you know a, a foot in both and um, so that's it's a hard toss-up when you're filming you're like oh a play but when you're like it's always the grass is greener but um they're both very different and yeah I really I think theatre is hard I think when you're doing a play it's like, okay, it's long hours. I'm filming something at the moment and it's long hours filming, but I think doing a play, you really like earn your money. It's like a tough old slog, you know? Well, especially a piece like this where, where it's just the two of you from start to finish. And it's like, it's the marathon, right? As opposed to film, which is little sprints. Yeah. But it's, it's yeah, you, it's basically like you say action and then the play ends and it's like you cut. But for, <laughs> for the film, you do that over and over. But then you have to do the same scene basically for two months or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, they both have their pros and cons. So I know that's a really wishy-washy answer, but I do really like them both. So yeah. Um, hey, Stephen. Yeah, for you, Stephen. Or do you, well, go ahead. Well, yeah, well... Um, it's it's always nice when you get a film or TV gig for loads of reasons. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but I was just thinking about it. I mean, I I did my first play in two thousand and four in my first year at university in the in the drama society that I joined. Um, 
more so to be a writer, but I, I got involved acting. And it, this is the longest I've been without being on stage, whether it be as a student or trying to break in or then being a professional actor for the last 10 years or whatever it is. So, because uh, the last play I did was March last year. Yeah. So, um, now I've done bits of TV and film and some radio plays and, and been lucky and kept busy. Um, but to actually perform in front of a live audience, uh, yeah, so it, it, like it, it'll be over. When by the time we get to be back on stage in Ireland again, it'll be well over a year. Um, right. To me is like, I don't know. It's like to take your take your the big the thing you love to do most. It's like I don't know. Um, you know, a soccer player being told you can't can't even you can't even train with teammates. You know, let alone yeah. play. Man. Um. So I think I'm really missing it now. Uh, that connection with an audience, and I always sort of consider myself a theatre actor, but that's sort of a bit of a cop out because if I was getting lots of movie roles, I'd be going, oh, "I'm a great movie actor." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think you know, I've always said there's there's actors I really admire in Ireland, people like Killian Murphy, who's obviously be, is a, a movie star. Yeah, Killian doesn't need to come and come back and do kind of almost avant garde like plays in Ireland, but he does because he loves it, and I think that's where I'd like to be if I ever got to a stage where I was offered movie and TV gigs and could pick and choose, I'd always come back to the theater. So I know it's yeah, my big passion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Killian's a great example of that, of just someone who walks both worlds quite well. And, um, and, and, and it seems like both of you are, are heading, heading that direction too. Um, will, I wanted to ask, like, how is filming right now? Are, are are you able to continue film production? Are you like quarantined on set with your castmates? Like, how's that going? Bizarrely, I was on. I'm on a gig in Belfast at the moment, and I was on a gig in Clare a couple of months ago. So I was really lucky that I've had work at all. Um, but and both sets have been different. But we are COVID tested, uh, like twice a week. Mm. Um, there's different sections of who you're allowed to be around and then we mask up all the time until we're shooting and only the actors then take it off and then we put yeah. it on and lots of hand sanitizing all that but yeah. um, yeah, mainly lots of COVID tests so and how is that how do you find that because I, I did a couple of film shoots that was very similar to that of like mask on until you know, right the moment you, you take it off. And then like the director and the crew, they are all like goggles and masks and face shields. It's such a, it's, it feels so alien. Like how does it, how do you feel your performance is translating or, or your, really your mental prep time to sort of get yeah. into that moment? Because there's this thing yeah. in your face that you're- that Everything's you to... longer, like fittings are longer. Everything just takes more time. And then seeing someone's face, we always think it's, oh, it's all in the eyes. Da, da, da. And then as soon as someone takes the bottom and you're like, w whether it's crew or whether, and you see that bottom half of their face, you're like, oh my God, that's what you look like. And you forget <laughs> how much you engage with someone's face. And we unconsciously like put you into it. Like, oh, you're that person or you're this person. And it's like, just so amazing to see someone's whole face. You're like, yeah. This like there you are like oh my god I get to see it so it's uh yeah it's very strange um yeah it's very strange yeah but um, we're essential. we're being classed as essential workers filming but theater isn't so it's I find it it I, you get quite guilty and if it's quite unfair that yeah theater is not uh you know necessary work but film we are exempt because money and COVID tests and all that that is really interesting that film actors have been, or, or film production has been yes. deemed essential. Um, yes, essential. Wow. Uh, you got to keep the masses entertained at home, <laughs> I suppose. Well, you know, like I say this a lot because, I, and, and I don't know if you, either of you ever have this temptation of, of being in the arts, we, we sometimes we downplay our, our importance in, in society of like, well, I just tell stories. I'm not a doctor or something like yeah. that. And, yeah. and yet during COVID, most people have not needed a doctor. What they've needed is an escape from their reality. They've needed the arts. They've needed entertainment. Um, you know, some people absolutely, yes, need emergency health and care and they should obviously we should prioritize that but i've just been thinking about that since 
almost a year now since March of, of how important the arts really are and how necessary uh, they are, even just for our own mentality as artists to, I don't know, like, no, we we give ourselves a break <laughs> sometimes. Well, you can make, I mean, I've done interviews with if, uh, for different things in the last year and it's like, you know, are people seeing the value of the arts and why is the arts essential? And, and um, uh, you know, it's not a case of a competition, but I think that right. if you've got a town or a city, I think that, you know, a theatre and a library are, are as essential, should be on the same sheet as at, right after you build your hospital and your schools, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, for, for lots of reasons, for, for yeah. artists and audiences and particularly for young people, um, mm. you know, and, uh, and yeah, it's the, I mean, we've all said it a million times. It's the old argument, you know, what would people have done without, without their Netflix and Amazon primes and their, and their, their books and their yeah. Yeah. collections, you know, uh, in the last yeah. year. Um, so it's just unfortunate that film and TV and radio can translate, but theater doesn't really translate as well oftentimes on screen, unless you're doing like a NT live that one of those where it's like, you know, it's got great cameras and it's funded and it's well done. Yeah. But, um, yes, obviously after our healthcare system and we realize, Oh, nurses should be paid more. Oh, teachers should be paid more. You kind of go, yeah, but also our art, whether it's like poetry, writing, whatever it is that keeps people alive too. And it kind yeah. of, yeah, it really does keep people alive and keeps us going and it makes us, it helps us understand the world that we live in, you know? Yeah. There's a couple exactly. Oh, I'm uh, of course, we're the choir, right? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, there's a couple good comments just to point out in the in the chat there of uh, Anne or Robert said, artists in this time are helping us heal. So we're like doctors. <laughs> um, so <laughs> great. Uh, and then uh, thank you, Louise, for saying art is essential to mental well-being. Um, yeah, like you just need to hear stories. It's, it's, it is essential. It is, it is so primal a part of our, our existence. Um, so yeah, that's great to, to hear folks agreeing there. Um, I'm curious, you know, just to ask, um, we probably have a, a time for just a little bit more, but um, what's next for either of you? I, I know, um, Stephen, congrats on being uh, named the, the, the Phelan Donlin uh, bursary and recipient. Um, that is super exciting news. And uh, are you working on something specific with that bursary or is, it, uh, or is there something, uh, another project that that is helping funding? Yeah, yeah. well, they, they kind of, um, they look at a sample of previous work. So I sent them actually this play and, and some ideas for new ones. Um, and then when I, I was kind of working again with Sean and some other actors, um, on a project that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working on at the moment. We did, um, with the Abbey Theatre, the National Theatre in Ireland, we did a kind of development week, um, about a new play about a, a couple who live together in London, an Irish guy, a white Irish guy, and uh, a British woman who's of Pakistani descent. Mm. And um, it, a kind of a story about a, a mixed race couple uh, living in London who kind of, are getting on with their life and getting on fine and and don't care about each other's history they're just a couple in love getting on um but it's really about the the world that we find ourselves in now where we're constantly being told how different we all are and how uh divided everything is and um everything is so polarized so it's sort of about how do normal people come together and stay together when they've got all their own baggage but they've also got the world trying to uh squeeze the little flat they live in mm -hmm. higher, higher. Um, yeah so that's what i'm kind of working on and obviously you know um trying to turn this play they've all heard into uh into a tv script so that's that's pretty much my my next few months uh, at home i think in in dublin yeah yeah great and, and how about you sean are you are you, you're still filming modern love is that right no, I'm finished on that. Um, okay. So it was season two of Modern Love, and I don't know if anybody's watched 
season one already, but they're all standalone episodes of, mm. it was based on the New York, the New York Times articles and um, John Carney basically helped develop it into this um, TV series. So I'm on one episode of season two uh, with that. And it just so happens to be, it sounds very, like far more impressive, <laughs> but uh, yeah, right. it's, yeah, yeah. I play a cop, a guard. So yeah. All right. And, one of the episodes in Modern Love, yeah. and I'm shooting this in Belfast at the moment, which is like an indie feature called Bally Walter. Oh, right. And that's, is that written by Stacey Gregg? Yes. Yeah. 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 She's a great, great writer. Writer. Yeah. writer. Yeah. 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 I love her piece, Scorch. Um, yeah. Yeah. So powerful. Yeah. Um, it's really cool. Yeah. Well, uh, death is so exciting to chat with both of you and thank you everyone um for joining us today um once again i want to drop that uh Mekela is going to drop that um google form in the chat uh so if you can let us know what you thought about today's um program we would love to hear from you um like i said I, i'm just missing the ability to to shake your hand and in, 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 after a show and, and say thanks for coming but uh i do want to say next up um uh, two things coming up at Solus New and Next. Next Sunday, January 17th, we're launching a new series that we're calling Is It About a Bicycle? Which brings together uh, contemporary Irish artists with leaders and experts from a variety of sectors to explore shared interests across uh, you know, many disciplines. Next week's uh, event features Adrian Duncan, uh, who's a writer and visual artist curator Michelle Horrigan. And then uh, next month, February 21st, we will continue another radio drama piece, which is Marina Carr's Hecuba. So we'll have another listening party just like today. Hope you can join for that. Um, and I'm gonna leave that link up in the chat just for a second so you can grab it because as soon as the meeting is over, you'll, you'll, you'll miss the link. We'll email that out again if you need that, uh, but uh, it's just easy to, to grab it now while we're all here. Um, and then I just, uh, you know, it's hard to do a round of applause, but uh, thank you again, Shauna and Steven, such lovely work and uplifting and encouraging and inspiring and uh, congrats to both of you. Yeah, well, thanks very much for this as well. This has been brilliant and you're keeping the fire lit. Yeah, I've been looking, looking forward to this all week. It's, it's small things like this that keep people connected and. Uh, I hope people. I hope people enjoyed it. I was just thinking on the radio that it's. Um, I think it's. I think the play is a lot funnier on stage. So <laughs> I, was just, I caught the end of it and I thought, oh god, this is really sad. <laughs> um, no, none at all. But hopefully, people got something from it, and uh, I hope to. Uh, I hope you. Maybe I'll see you guys in person at some stage in the uh, in the future. I know. I it would it would be great to to get y'all both over here in the United States as well, and. Um, and I was muted, of course, but I was laughing throughout. So, oh. um, uh, and I know the piece. I I, I knew it was coming up. So, uh, um, it, thank you again, everyone. And it looks like you've got a lot of comments in, in the chat there of, of people who also enjoyed it. So, um, uh, such a pleasure, and um, hope to chat again. Yes.